Good morning. Merry Christmas to you. So we always do a little poll when we, not, we ever gather for Christmas Eve. So here we are on Christmas Eve morning. Because I guess Christmas Eve technically is at sundown, right? So how many of you have already opened gifts? Oh my gosh. Okay, the first Sunday in January, we're going to be talking about self-control. <laughs> some, some of you obviously have lost it entirely, so we're going we're gonna to work on that. So uh, I noticed in the paper there are services all over town, and uh, thank you for coming and, and sharing in, in our, uh, our, our Christmas Eve service. I will tell you, though, that this is the church that Santa Claus attends. <laughs> Mr. Mounts? You got a show right there, there, right there. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All the way from the North Pole. Glad to have you in church with us again this morning. So uh, thanks for coming. So we're going to do, uh, do kind of a whole variety of things. For those of you that haven't been with us on a, our, and I almost hate to call it traditional Christmas Eve, because if I say traditional Christmas Eve, some of you are going to think midnight mass and lighting candles, and that's not what I mean. Traditional Christmas Eve for us is a little crazy, uh, and, and tends to be pretty kid and family centered, and uh, so if you haven't been a part of one of those, that's what's going to happen this morning, because uh, it's kind of our tradition to, to spend some time be, having fun together. Our, our commitment every year is to tell the story and sing the songs. We just never tell the story the same way twice, uh, but the songs are, are pretty consistent. So one of the things we're going to do this morning is we're going to have a Christmas play, uh, and we need some of you to be in it uh, because we haven't practiced or anything yet. So uh, this, this is, we're just going to, we're going to make it up. It, it may or may not be biblically accurate entirely, but it's going to be close so it's uh, docudrama might be the way to think of it. We're going to have a little Christmas docudrama this morning. So uh, we, need, we need an angel. We need uh, somebody of angelic presence. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's interesting to notice some of the people who are claiming. Uh, it's not exactly typecasting, but uh, Mr. Purdy, I see your hand back there. I think uh, you're, you're about as angelic as anybody we know. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hark the sarcastic angel uh, played by okay got that Charles Charles Purdy okay um, oh we got to get a narrator ready we need a narrator to try to keep us halfway on track so uh, we're need we're needing a narrator to get to oh I, I see a lot of nominations up there uh, Mr. McGowan yeah yeah all right you got nominated by your friends, so uh, all right, all right, you're you're in, you're in there. Okay, um, we need a we, we need a, a sweet and wonderful Mary, uh, kind and gentle of heart. Uh, <laughs> wow, somebody up there really wants that part, or somebody really wants somebody to want that part. Uh, okay, Nevea, I, I see you up there. All right, you can you can do that. Uh, we need somebody to chaperone and care for and uh, take care of Mary. We need a Joseph. We need we need uh, we need somebody that can do that. Mr. Moynihan, after all the work you did for uh, the Christmas play, we'll reward you with a part. How, how's that? We, you can you can you can do that. <clears throat> Uh, this would need to be some government employee, uh, somebody who works for the government. We need a Caesar slash Herod. Uh, so we, we, need, we need some government employee. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, what? Are you a captain yet? No. 15 years down there, what, what, are our, what, are, what is your rank? Lieutenant. Lieutenant Fuller. I think you should be, yeah, you should be Caesar slash Herod. Yeah, head on the back, yeah, yeah, back there, you get your, you get your costume. 
Okay, that's, that's good. That's good. Let's see, I've got to go over my list here. Joseph, Joseph, Angel, Angel, and Charles Purdy. I have trouble with that, but it's going to work out. Uh, uh, narrator, we got that. Ma- Mary, yeah, we got a Mary, Caesar Herod. Uh, okay, we need three wise persons. You want to be a wise person? Okay, okay, okay. You can you can head back there. All right. You guys just want you got hit right here. You just empty the front row. Are you guys going to be wise persons? Can you can you do your you got lines? Are you ready to learn your lines? You ready? Okay. All right. We got three wise persons. Two of, two of them are male, but we're trying to be politically correct, you know, so, so that's important. Um, shepherds can be, I, I guess there's no, there, that there's no gender bias there, so uh, we need some shepherds. You want to be a shepherd? Okay, all right, you have to go back there and get, get your open. We, we need, we, we got to have at least a couple of guys, come on, we can't, it can't be all, all girl shepherds. Okay, oh, all right, all right, there's a shepherd. We need, we need another shepherd. Come on. Kevin, were you nominating? Were you, I, it, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate you doing, taking, taking, that's what you get for. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the best dressed shepherds we've ever had. And uh, I don't think he needs a costume. I, I think he just needs a staff and he'll be ready to go. Okay. Now, I was told very specifically that I needed to look over in this direction and to find some people that weren't terribly large. Because we need four manger residents. Manger residents. Okay? So I need, I need four manger residents. What? You want to be a manger resident? Okay, come on down. Pot, don't, pots, don't look too disgusted over there, buddy, because I'm seeing it. He's got his arms crossed. He's doing this thing. Yeah, I'm. I see you over there, Potts. I think I, I think you need to be a manger resident. Come on, come on, Potts. You can do it. All right, there we go. There we go. All right. You want to be a manger resident? Come on down. All right. All right. Come on down. You, you can take your dad's place. We, we aced him out of the uh, government job. But you already had your costume already. I, mean, I hate to see you change costumes. <laughs> all right. So I think, I think we've got all of our parts covered. Uh, these people are going to go learn their lines and uh, get all dressed up and be ready to roll. Cool. Look at there. That is like Christmas on the move right there. That's... <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> that, that's a lot of Christmas spirit. <laughs> oh. All right, thanks. We got that put together. You guys all get ready for this. This is going to be an award-winning production. We've been nominated for three Golden Globes already. So it's, uh, you're, you're going you're gonna to enjoy this this morning. All right. Well, if, if, if you just join with me, we want to we open in prayer and just say thanks for what this day is all about. So, Father, we say thank you for Christmas and what it means. And, God, we know there's all kinds of things that have traditionally gotten tied to it, and we're not even sure if it's the exact day and all of that. But we are going to commemorate an actual event, the time when you looked at humanity and said, those people need help, and you came down and helped us. And so, God, we want to say thanks for that. Thanks for the way that you came. You didn't come and scare us to death. You came and appealed to us out of kindness and out of love. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your heart for us. We thank you for your gift to us. We thank you for helping us. And God, thank you that we get to celebrate with you and with each other the most significant thing that's ever happened on this planet. Thanks, God. Amen. Amen. Hello. Oh, it's a Christmas miracle. 
Anyway, I get to help with what we call the outer courts of worship. I get to start us off with our worship song or our singing that gets us in the mood as we get ready to usher in the presence of the Lord. So I'm going to look for some helpers to help me out with that as well. But I need a helper who's just going to have a short-term helper. Eric, would you come up here and be my helper right here in the front just for this part we're going to hand out. We're going to sing the 12 Days of Christmas together, everybody. Yeah. But we're going to do it in a little bit of a different way. You guys are going to be representing your sections so, Eric, I'm going to send some people down here, and if you'll hand them these signs when they come down as they willingly volunteer. Tyler Bernheisel, thanks a lot. Come on down. <laughs> All the way from Australia, representing this section, day two. Tyler, come on over here. Now, I want you to stay right there with your section right there, okay, and hold that sign. And we're going to practice this, Tyler. So, you, when it's your turn for your section, we get to the second day of Christmas. My true love gave to me. Your whole section can choose to stand up if they are filled with Christmas cheer. But it's up to you to get them to do that. You've got to really work the audience. Are you able to do that? Yeah, he says your biggest fans right there in the front. Now practice your sign as well. So when it's ready, and then how do you, how do you flip your sign over on the second day of Christmas? Truly gave to me. Your, your section's not really pulling it off right now. I'm just, I'm just saying, Tyler. You want to work on that, okay? All right. Now I've got the third day of Christmas, and I'm looking for someone up here. In this section up here, who would like to be the third day of Christmas? And uh, I need someone who's going to be on point, who's got energy, and they're all like, please, dear Lord, do not pick me. Uh, let me see. Uh, there's a dad up there, a soon to be dad up there. I need him to come on down. Where's my soon to be dad? Nick Zalembo, come on down. And we're going to give Nick that sign. Nick, when you know, keep coming this way, Nick, not the exit door. You're doing good, buddy. <clears throat> you pick them. You try to work with them. You do your best. It's like raising children. <laughs> now, Nick, you're going to take your sign, and I want you to just stay in the middle of the stairwell when you get your, your group. But they need to be able to see you as well, okay? So remember, Nick, you're going to really motivate them. The three French hen section right up there, okay? There we go for that one. Let me see. I've got... Uh, Fourth, we're at the fourth. Thank you, Mr. Eric. Uh, let's go all the way up here on fourth in this top section up here. Who can we get for fourth up here? Looking, looking, looking. I need someone. Oh, she's a painter. Come on down, Miss Matt. You, yeah, you paint. You do the animals. She's like, no, you know you're a painter. Come on down. Yes, you. Come all the way down here. I've seen your artwork. It's amazing. She's going to work her section as well. So, Eric, we're going to take that over to the stairwell to her, and she's going to stand halfway up on her stairs as well. And then what day am I up to right now? I'm up to sixth day. How about right here in the middle? Anybody in the middle want to be a sign? Oh, no, we don't have that. We're, wait, we're saving five. Believe me, there's an order to this. <laughs> you OCD people are all like, this is not working out right. You can't do that on there. All right. I, I give this man a hard time rel unrelentlessly. I hassle him every Sunday when I see him. And he still keeps coming back to this church. I don't know why he does it. He's all the way in the very back row. Come on down here, buddy. Come on down here. Because if you're down here, we know that you're not pickpocketing anybody. That's what I accuse him of all the time. I say that, you know, the only reason he gives the BGMC is because he took money from everybody else. Um, but you're going to be staying right down here in the front for this one here. You're going to be sign waiver number six. There we go, sign waiver number six. Now we're up to sign number seven. Let's go up to this section up here. Ashton, you want to be sign number seven? Come on down, Ashton. Ashton, one of the kids that was in our Christmas play. Run, Ashton, run. It's okay to run in church this time, even though it's our, one of our rules we don't allow to do. Come on, Ashton. Now, Ashton's going to come all the way down here, and he's going to stay down on the stage down here with us, okay? So the, the, those balcony sections. Where did my painter go? Oh, there you are. I want you in the middle of the stairwell for your section. You're going to stay in the middle. Ashton, come on down here, buddy. Ashton, come on up here. Focus, Ashton. Stay focused right here. It's a beautiful sign. I know we were talking. You're going to stand right here. Now, you got to make sure your section can see you, right? You see that bright light in your eyes? Okay, but you got to hold it up. And then they got to get really rowdy up there, right? There. Yeah. He's like, hear ye, hear ye. Okay, what am I up to? Eight. Up I got eight. I need section number eight right over here. Oh, you know what? The whole family. Mom, come on down with your kids. The whole family is going to work number eight here. I love it. It's a family, a family that's sticking together here. Now, you folks are going to be on the stairs right here with day number eight. Does that make sense? 
All right. So they got D number eight. What do we got next? Day number nine. And I need another section. I think I'm going to go right here with this section. Do you want to be day nine? Come on down right here on the steps. There we go. The tenth, you're going to be right here on these steps right here, the second steps up. Set your coffee down right there. That'd be great. Okay, we are day number 10. And which sections have I not picked yet? Oh, oh, the spotlights are making it hard to see. All the way up here, um, holding the spotlights. Uh, there we go. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh. Oh, wait. I'm trying to get a thing. Uh, oh, Mr. Hendy. Mr. Hendy. He's, he's up there smiling like he's going to pick one of the kids from our section. I just know it. He's just smiling. And as soon as I said his name, he went, oh. Adam, Adam, come on down, representing your section. Where did he go? The spotlights. Spotlights, follow Adam. Don't follow the blank walls. There he is. Keep him in the light. He's, he might be a runner. Keep an eye on him. Don't try and bribe Nick to do two numbers at once. It won't work. He'd be like, Nick, take, take two numbers. You'll be my BFF. <laughs> All right. And where should we have him stand to represent his section? Down here? We should have him down here to represent? Yeah, we're going to have him do it down here as well. Adam, grab that number, and you're going to be right up here representing your section. Do I have another number now, Eric? Number 11. Last one. I need to get another section in here. What sections have not been picked yet? Oh, ho, 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 ho. I think we've got left and right here. I've got on either side of the sound booth. Yeah, Paul True. Paul True. Bring Randy with you. Paul True, bring Randy down with you. You guys are going to do it together. There they go. Now, while they're doing that, i got a surprise for you, because you did ask about what about one, day's number one, day number five, day number 12. Well, here's the deal with day number one, okay? Day number one's right here, and this is a chance where somebody is going. You ever hear that thing about, you know, everyone on average has about 15 minutes of fame? Well, some of you are going to spend that there, here this morning as well, because the first day of Christmas, I'm running around like Oprah with a microphone, and I'm calling you out of the audience, and you get to sing a... Solo. Ah, don't think in the middle of the rows you're exempt either because I will climb mountains to get to you as well. So first day of Christmas is going to be a solo. On the fifth day of Christmas, you know, Eric, you're going to stay down here. You're going to be number five. Everybody's going to sing number five together, which as you know is five. And we're all going to sing together on number 12. Eric, you have this really cute um, thing going on at your home. It's called your wife. Come on down here, Miss Janelle. You're going to have to stand up here and do nothing until the very last time. Then we're all going to sing day number 12 together. So everybody's going to sing together on day 5 for the, on day 12, okay? Everyone got that so far? Now, don't forget, Adam, you got to get your section rowdy up there. How are they looking, rowdy? <laughs> yep, they're all up there looking at you going, sucker! <laughs> yeah, that's a bad one. I'm going to run around with sign number 1, but I want my friend Neil to come on down because we need some accompaniment. So Neil is going to be shredding the guitar when we do the 12 days of Christmas, are you guys ready for a Christmas miracle? And I will tell you this, we have not had any practices, obviously. Neil and I have not practiced either, have we? Not a one. Not a one. I got to go find somebody now to get ready to sing their first solo. Hmm. I didn't give you a section, did we? You can just join any section. Join any section. This is the freestyle section because you don't have anybody assigned to you. So you sing your favorite sections or sing them all. Yes, America's Got Talent, and so does this section right here. Okay, Neil, why don't you warm us up a little bit? What are we going to sound like here? Mm. I almost feel like there should be flash pots and smoke machines. Good job, Neil, because on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me <laughs> a, partridge a partridge and a pear, and a pear tree. tree. He giggled, but he got it done. <laughs> now, Neil, next is on the second day of Christmas, Christmas my true, true love gave, gave to, to me. me. Wait for it, Neil. Wait for it. Running around. And a 
partridge in a pear tree. Awesome solo stuff going on. All right, Neil, bring us into the third day. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. And I got to run up here again, all this way, running, running. Oh, all the way back here, Dr. Brandis. And a partridge in a pear tree. Woo! We have talented people. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. All right, wait, wait. Section four. Not that hard. It's this many fingers less one, okay? That's your time, okay? Let's try it again. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Woo! And a what? What? <laughs> a partridge and a pear tree. All right. Everybody, get your vocalizers warmed up because we're all in this together. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Four, three, two, and a. Ten a pear tree. Woo! You can't trip up those worship leaders. Are you ready, young man? You sure? They're, now they're all counting on you, okay? On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Four, three, two. Oh, I'm so underprepared for this. Every time we do this, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Oh my goodness, they can't sit far enough. Oh, uh, that was day six, right? Now turn your number back over again because we're losing count here. Work with me, work with me. You're going to remedial singing classes. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love saved the game to me. Six. Everybody? That's right. And four. Three. Two and uh, you two ladies together. Partridge in a pear tree. Good job, ladies. Oh, Mr. Neil, we got it going on, don't we? Are you ready? I'm ready. On the eighth <laughs> day of Christmas, Christmas, my true love gave to me. Wait, 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 wait. That was weak, weak. You need a do-over, right? Do you want to phone a friend? On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Seven, six, everybody. Five golden rings. Four, three, two, and a... Partridge in a pear tree. Oh, they are on it. You guys are in good form today. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. <laughs> bling, bling. And come over here, both you schmeeters together. Get up here. Solo time. And a partridge in a pear tree. Good job. All right. That put us up. We are on what day now? Adam, is it your turn? Are we up to day 10, Adam? Are you ready to rock your section? Here it is. They are rocking it up there, Adam. Here we go. On the 10th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Nine. Eight. 
seven, six, all together. Four, three, two, and I'm all the way up in the balcony, aren't you nervous? Oh, coming all the way through, coming all the way through. Hold on to Neil, make it a long one, shred it, Neil. I'm still looking. They are not looking at me, but I'm looking at all of them. And it sounds like we're gonna go right here. You two, are you ready? The fire tree, Jennifer tree. Woo! On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me ten. Nine, eight, seven, six. Embarrassing girls right up here. Ready? They're so cute. All right, everybody, here's our last one. We're doing it all together. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12, 11, 8, I lost where we're at. <laughs> what? Four, three, two. Are you ready, Nick? Here it is. It's your big time, Nick. Ready? Sing it to your wife like you've never sang to her before. You ready? Set. Go. It's partridge in a pear tree. Got it. You nailed it, buddy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that has been the 12 days of Christmas. Give it up for all my helpers in the room as well. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Neal, superstar on guitar. Are we done? <laughs> so, Neil, how many keys can we play in at the same time? All of them. All of them. <laughs> all of them, yes. That's the 12 days of Christmas and 26 keys. That's, that's the way that worked out. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I hope nobody recorded that. That, 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 wouldn't, that wouldn't go over well. That wouldn't go over well. Oh. So it, it's, part, it's part of our worship experience to, to be involved in giving. And so uh, we've got a couple opportunities for you to do that. The ushers are going to serve us here in just a moment and give you an opportunity to worship and in your giving of tithes and offerings. The other thing that we want to remind you of is that there are some barrels that are out by the front door, and uh, Celebrate Recovery Ministry is going to be involved in a give back program on the 31st, so next Sunday. Uh, and if you guys would like to be involved with that, they're going to be leaving the service next, next week because uh, we're going to have our Christmas Eve candlelight communion. And for those of you that haven't done that before, we have different stations where there's communion available and, and elders and pastors are there to pray with you, your family, a group of friends, however you would like to do that. But it's about praying for the new year and what you're hoping to see happen, how you'd like to see God work in your life. And so it's an opportunity for you to take communion in thanks for what Jesus has done. It's an opportunity to have prayer in what you're hoping he will be involved in your life in accomplishing next year so immediately following that service next sunday when it uh, we meet at 10 when it's over a group of people led by celebrate recovery are going to be going downtown to be giving away shoes and socks to some of the homeless and needy people in our community so there are barrels for you to make contributions to that if you'd like to join them uh, just look for the group that's uh, getting together out front and you can head downtown and be a part of that if you'd like to be a part of that give back next week so that's going to be happening so the ushers are going to serve us if they've found their ways to <laughs> I, I know everybody got a little frazzled there with 12 days but uh, we're, we're good and doc, dr tom good job on your uh, solo there buddy we appreciate that uh, you did a good job with that so those are some of the things that are coming up uh, as far as announcements and some of the opportunities for you to be able to be involved in in uh, giving and giving back to the community and helping some of the people in need so what we want to do now is to
narrator. We lost our narrator. Yeah, if we can, if we can find our narrator, which I think was Scott, I think, uh, wasn't it? That's not the narrator. Oh, there's the narrator. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a tough assignment. You got to be cool here. So you're, you're ready to roll. So, no further ado, I hand it off to you, Mr. Narrator. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Church, the skit you're about to watch is loosely based on the true story. Parkway does not claim any responsibility for historical, theological, or moral inaccuracies that may be portrayed. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. The virgin's name was Mary. <laughs> Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Is that a quesadilla? Okay. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Do not be afraid, Mary. Wait, your name is Mary, right? Yeah. Okay. The last girl that I told wasn't excited. Uh, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus, Jesus, a couple different names. How will this be since I am a virgin? Uh, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Good answer. Mary takes the baby. Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Joseph had in mind to divorce her quietly. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Oh, I know this is supposed to be a dream sequence, but I have some questions, and, and don't go wacky-zacky on me, okay? Wacky-zacky? Well, you know, last time you went and talked to Zachariah with Elizabeth, he laughed at you and you took his voice away. So don't do that to me, but I have some questions. It's a long time ago. Well, the thing is, my rabbi, Rabbi Seth, don't mind me laying down because I'm sort of a casual kind of person, but Rabbi Seth, back at the synagogue, even last week, was talking about how Mary had gone to the, you know, Uncle Zachariah and Aunt Elizabeth and was saying how... She could have been messing around back there. Anyways, I, because what is conceived is from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Boom. But I... No. Holy Spirit. <laughs> when... When Joseph finally listened and woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to and took Mary home as his wife. But, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. So Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She is with child. Let her sit here for a moment.
a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. <laughs> Everyone go to your towns and register. We get to go to Bethlehem. At the last Passover Black Friday sale, we had a sale. I picked up for us a Mark III sextant. Let me take a sighting here and we'll figure out where we are. Are you over there at the shiny dome? Back, back two people, back two people, over one. Yes, lean forward for me, I need to take a sighting behind you. Thank you. Well, we're at the 42nd latitude. And so if we go, wait a minute, shine your light over here. Who's this? Back to, back to, back to. Come here, Mary. Doesn't that look like Mr. Carmichael from Bethlehem? <laughs> oh, actually, he's from Nazareth. Nothing good comes out of Nazareth. <laughs> so, so anyways, one day from here, one day's walk, that away is Bethlehem. What do you say? It's that way? No, it's, it's one day's walk that way. Yes, dear. We'll go that way. So now, now Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem. <laughs> While they were there, the time came for a baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. What's supposed to happen here? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today a Savior has been born to you. Gloria excelsior Diapo. <laughs> Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Thank you, he's God. <laughs> After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. From the east. Thank you, he's God. <laughs> Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, Report to me so that I too may go and worship him. <laughs> I don't actually intend to worship him. Oops. 
Wow, thanks. Thank you. He's God. <laughs> and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God a man, and live, live from Bethlehem. It's Christmas! Stand up, let's sing a couple of Christmas carols together. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled, joyful ye nations rise, join the tribe.
You can sit down now. An angel came to see Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared, and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're going to have, what? Good. Mary, you're gonna have a baby. I, you're gonna have a baby. You will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not gonna have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager. I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem. Ham, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms. Literally, no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place and here in Bethlehem, hand that that you can stay stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way, and they followed. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, and then they saw angels. The angel said, "A new baby is getting born, who is king of the Jews." The angel was singing. And then the shepherd said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out a night. And then the wise men heard about it. And then a star appeared. We should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, and <laughs> some wipes, and some milk, <laughs> some shoes, some Jordans. Gold, Frank, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's going to be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby i ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> the new baby is going to change the world.
sing it together. Well, thanks for coming and being a part of our Christmas Eve celebration. I know some of it was silly and some of it was crazy, but I hope that somewhere in there you caught the reality of the story. And I hope that you remember in the midst of all of that craziness that this story happened in real time to real people. Sometimes we set them apart and we kind of go, well, they must have been special. They were shepherds watching their flocks by night. It was a guy engaged to be married to a woman that ended up pregnant, and he's trying to figure out what's going on. And it was a teenage girl that ended up pregnant, trying to explain to the whole world that it had happened in some unique way, that everybody's going, yeah, I don't know. It's a real story that happened to real people. And, and I want you to know that you can be a part of that story. I, I just felt in, impressed this morning just to, just to stop and, and to share with some of you that are maybe going, yeah, that was, that's unique and it's historic and it happened back then and it happened for other people. I want you to know that it happened for you. It happened for you. I, I, I don't know what you're going to get for Christmas. I don't know what presents you've opened up. I don't know what's in your stocking. I don't know what your family normally does or what you wish your family normally did or what your family used to do that it can't do now because of all the things that have happened. I don't, I don't know that story but you're living it. But I want you to know that the gift of Christmas was given to you. You're eligible for the gift of Christmas. It's not like you have to be somebody special. It's not that you have to be somebody unique. It's not that you have to get your act together first. It's not that you have to earn it. I want you to know that God's grace gave a gift to you of eternal life, and it's for you. It's for you. And I know some of you are going, I, I don't even get a very good Christmas at home. I want you to know that the best gift of Christmas is for you. There's nobody here this morning that needs to walk out of this building saying, I don't qualify. It doesn't extend to me. That gift wasn't for me. It's a wonderful story, but it doesn't apply to my life. I want you to know that the gift of Christmas is for you. And I'm not entirely sure why it's so important to stop and say that, but I know it's important right now to stop and to say that. You need to know that for all of the silliness and the crazy ways that we tried to say it, this story is real and it's for you. God came here for you. God came here for you because he wants you to be with him forever. That's his heart and nothing can stop that from happening unless you tell him no. No circumstance, no history, no one else's opinion. Whether you think you ever accomplish anything significant in your life or not, none of that has got anything to do with whether or not this gift is available to you. This gift is available to you. Eternal life. So, Father, I thank you for the story of Christmas. I thank you for what it means. I thank you for the fact that you invaded human lives to say, I'm here to help you. And I know you need a lot of help. I'm going to do it in a miraculous way. But it's eligible to all humans. 
No one's exempt. And so, God, I pray for every person that is here this morning that they would open their heart to you and say, okay, Jesus, I don't even know what this means exactly, but I want the gift of Christmas. I want that new life. I want to be changed. Just like history was changed, I want my history to be changed by the story and the gift of Christmas. So thank you, Father, for what you've done for us. Thank you that we get to share it together in kind of fun and crazy ways. In your name we pray. Amen. A couple of things as you go. For all, of our, for all of our kids, and you'll just have to decide whether you're a kid or not. For all of our kids, we have some gift bags that are available that are just a little Christmas thing to do at home. And so that's available. And because it's Jesus' birthday, we have cupcakes, birthday cake. So on your way out... There's a Christmas birthday cake. So thank you for coming and sharing. God bless you. Merry Christmas.